Good morning. We're learning a mimer of Pasha's Ekev. This mimer was said in the 18th of Av in 1969, Tashin Chavtes. The mimer would speak about a Pasuk in this week, Pasha, in uh, chapter 11, verse 20. Uh, it says the famous statement, It's the mitzvah to write the Shema and the Hoyim Shemaya on a parchment, and the uh, mitzvah mezuzah to write mezuzah, Shema and Hoyim Shemaya, and to place it on the door. The ease of my Madiva Matril the Rebbe again in this uh, group of Mamorim, the Rebbe is referencing to the Mimer of the Rebbe Marash. The Mimer of the Rebbe Marash was said a hundred years before 1869. And the Mimer had the same opening uh, statement. So the Rebbe Marash explains she buys car closer. So what does it mean? Bezuzus beisecho, your your home. It says buys in general is referencing to the whole world. Closer. Every single person enters a home. Need to place some mezuzah on the door. What's the purpose of putting a mezuzah? So it will help you contemplate remembering that you need to draw down, you have a mission to draw down godly revelation into the world. And that has to do with the existence of the world. Same way that we, ins- that we, in- um, we instill a mezuzah in a private home. To show that the house and the owner of the house both belong to Hashem. And by doing so, the house is being guarded by Hashem. We just published uh, a story last week of a shliach in China. That I think in Guangzhou. That's the name of the the okay. city, Guangzhou. That he was away for about three weeks. Went to Israel. So he came back. I think it was in Israel. He came back with his family. It was a it's gated community. He lives. So I told them that there was a lot of thefts before we, we got to the gate. So there's a lot of theft, and they were instructed that every Every person that was away, every resident that was away, needs to uh, contact the police before he enters the home because they want to make sure they have um, fingerprints and evidence. Yeah. So they think that his house was invaded and therefore they. Okay. So he waits. Police tell police. Police come. Police comes and they go into his house. Obviously, they're afraid. They're thinking, "Wow, well, they're probably going to see a big mess." Enter the house and nothing is touched, nothing happened. Okay, police was surprised, but uh, he goes, he lives in, goes into his house. He gets a phone call. Three weeks, a month later, he gets a phone call from the from the uh, chief. The police chief tells him he wants to come down to the station, wants to speak to him. So he goes there. And he says that he caught the thieves. And they asked him. You invaded every single house. Why don't you invade this, the foreigner's house? So the the thieves showed him a picture, 
and his phone from his house, uh, Rabbi's house, and a picture of the mezuzah. So he said, we can dismantle any kind of alarm system. But we saw this on the door, we don't know what it is. Since we're not sure what it is, so maybe it's a type of security that we don't know how to uh, dismantle, so we left it alone. <laughs> we didn't touch the house. If you notice, it says in the Mezuzah, Shin Dalet Yud, the Shem El Daltes Yisor, meaning guarding the, the, the right. doors of Israel. So, miraculously, that was the only house that was not invaded. So it says over here the same thing, because the Mezuzah represents that the house and the owner of the house belongs to Hashem. And if that's the case, surrendering yourself and your house to Hashem, then the return of Hashem is protecting your house. There is the union of mezuzah not just in your house, as the Rabbi Marash writes, by Kayal Klolo Sailam. It's referring to the whole world. What does that mean? Because the inner meaning of mezuzah is to bring godliness to the world. Remember Hashem. Remember the mitzvahs before you leave the house, enter the house. There's obviously two uh, ways about it. One, that you enter the house, don't think that Hashem is only outside. By entering your house, you can do whatever you want. And when you go out of the house, don't think Hashem is in your ha- only in your house. When you go outside the house, you can do whatever you want. To tell you both ways, you should remember Hashem. Musa is there to remind you the mitzvahs, to remind you Hashem. What is the unique, the uniqueness of Am Yisrael? It says about them in the Gemara, uh, it's a Gemara in Yavami 61, the Gemara says, Atem Kuim Adam. You are called Adam. Meaning the Jewish people were given the title Adam. Remember we discussed that there are four levels Adam, Ish, Gever, Enosh. Right? You can call a person this four four ways. It says that the Kvarim, the graves, the Gemara over there in Yavama speaks about the graves of uh, cemetery of Goim. So it says that they're not metame. They're not they're not making you tame. Right. They're making you pure. Why? Because the pasuk, atem, vaatem tzoyni tzoyn mar isi, you are my flock. Odom atem, you are Odom. Atem kuim Odom, v'naiv di kachov kuim Odom. You are called Odom and not idolaters. That's uh, the pasuk, full pasuk. Shtaknim, full statement. Shemesaknim, because the mission of the Jewish people is to refine the world. In order for the world to be worthy to be a vehicle for Adam Alien, that the world should be a dwelling place for Adam Alien, for the supernal man. So our job is to refine that world, to prepare it for Adam Alien. Not some metaphorical dwelling. Befoyal, in actuality, should be a dwelling place for the Shechina, for Godly revelation. They say, by turning the world to become a dwelling for Hashem, we do that, we create Shemira to the whole world. This is so apropos to our times. We want uh, not just to be protected ourselves, but we want the world to be protected. We have to do our job. What is our job? Make the world, refine the world in such a way that godliness can be revealed in the world. Other men should feel comfortable coming down, supernal men, and living here. Should have a dwelling place down here. And by doing so, the world is protected. 
He said one of the reasons why, one of the reasons why the goyim all, always uh, blame the Jews for everything. Because they don't do their job. Because once we do our job, they are benefiting from it also. So if they are missing something, that means that we we are not compl- doing our job in, right. in a perfect way. <laughs> By the way, I think we had a, a miracle. It was a hurricane. Per, we, us together was last night. It could have been pouring in. We couldn't. We couldn't have been able to come. And it was supposed to be 110 mile an hour winds and everything this morning at six o'clock. Nothing. And here we are. Right. Hashem. Brook Hashem. But did the hurricane hit anywhere else? Or? Yeah, it's going oh. north. It's going to be a big mess in Georgia and about up the coast. I mean, whatever happened here is basically gone. Hopefully over there it, it goes away also. Yeah, hopefully over there it should go away. It should go all the way out and not bother anybody. Hmm. <sighs> Hurricanes actually do a positive thing. It's not like they just do damage because like the Everglades need the rain and everything to to clean out another um, concept it says we have to make not just a dira but also dira as an Indian shall kavua dira is a concept of something that is more permanent the kavua le bota. And why? Because something that is permanent is not nullified. This is also a Gemara in Ksubis, a Gemara in Zvochim, uh, that discusses this halacha about Dovo Kavua, something that is permanent does, is not nullified. For example, if you bought meat from a place that has nine um, kosher and one not nine kosher stores, nine kosher meat stores, and one store is selling non-kosher meat and he's in doubt which store did he buy the meat. Right? Yeah, but I got it. But Allah says since the non-kosher store is permanent, meaning it's been there for a long time, even though it's a minority in comparison to the majority of the stores, but kavua in a bottle, the something that is permanent is not nullified, and therefore the meat is going to be also. This concept of something that is permanent is not nullified, it's, it's, it's certainly minatel. Not like other things that are not being nullified. Where it's back and forth discussion. If it's biblical or rabbinical. For, for, for example, about the halacha, that's something that is significant. They do not uh, nullify. This was a the Ramah and Mishnah Lomelech is speaking about uh, halachically if something is very distinguished like very expensive uh, type of nuts or pomegranates that were mixed with uh, with something that is isu, something that is forbidden question if they are nullified to the isu or not since they are very distinguished And there it says, it's something that is significant, something that is choshu, important, loibot. Now, if something that is prohibited that, and significant at the same time, prohibited and significant, was mixed with majority of, of permissible things, would you would say that the significant and prohibited nullified to the none? Or not? So he says, all the mixture is prohibited. So when do we say six, sixty times? It's when it's min be minu. 
it's the same the same type the same type let's say uh, a meat that is kosher with non-kosher meat okay 60 times kosher meat would nullify the 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 ones the 60th one of 60th of, of uh, non-kosher meat okay min bimina. but when you have let's say ola pomegranate but it's a very distinguished khlal ola is not something that very serious but we'll take an example of uh you know, untithed, right? Untithed uh, pomegranate, but it, since it's very distinguished, it's not it's not being nullified. It makes the whole mixture prohibited. How about like I I remember it was uh, my friend told me a story. In the rabbinical college, she used to help out, and they were, they, had, they were making a soup, and they opened an egg, and the, there was blood in the egg, and it dropped into the soup, so the soup. They threw the soup out, even though it was um, overwhelmingly more. Uh, yeah, I, the the blood made it um, not not usable. Right, but the point over here wants to say that according to many opinions, many poiskim, there is a doubt to be lenient, meaning there's there's a psak to be. Um, in a, in a place of a doubt, you have a suffolk, they're more lenient about it. In, like they have the general rule in halacha, sfeka de abanon de kula. If there's a doubt, which is rabbinically, they're more lenient. We take the leniency. And the, the klal, the general rule that something that is kavua, something that is permanent, is not being nullified, it's biblical. And when it's biblical, you have the rule of Sveika de Rabbano, Sveika de Raiso Lechumro. If it's a doubt which is biblical, then you're always more, str you're more stringent. The reason why. It's not being nullified, something that is permanent, is because it's not because added stringencies. This is a biblical concept. It's a biblical prohibition. Elami Karadin. In comes to rabbinical prohibitions, they, a lot of them are made to prevent you from getting into biblical prohibition. But this is the Ikaradin, it's something that is Kavua, not being nullified. Dovo Choshu, something that is significant, Loi Bota, that's rabbinical. So that's why there's many opinions that would permit the mixture. If there is, even though there is something Choshu in there, like very special nuts or special pomegranates that were thrown into a mixture, and they were prohibited for some reason. There's uh, many opinions that it would be permissible if it's overwhelmingly, uh, the amount is overwhelmingly kosher. Because Suffolk the Rabban, but is Suffolk the Raisa, like in the case of Dover Choshu Leboto, like the case of the nine stores of uh, kosher meat, and one non kosher meat, but since it's Kavua, since that non kosher meat has been there for a long time, Leboto. Unfortunately, in Tel Aviv, you have one or two stores that are, hopefully it's only one or shouldn't even be there, but they're selling non-kosher meat, purposely. It's a lot, yeah. The, for people that are looking for that, special sausages and the like. So, that store has been Kavua. If, if the store is there for many years, right? Yeah. But there's a, a discussion in the Gemara when you move into a town how soon you have to start to uh, pay taxes for that town yeah, yeah, when do you, when are you not considered a guest anymore when you're, you're considered a resident so 
in, in stores, whatever it is, makes it kavua. But once they're kavua, and you have a doubt if, if you bought the meat from which store, you're not sure which yeah. store you bought the meat, you can't eat that meat. It's of the ice. It's not yeah. anymore, it's not rabbinical, uh, rabbinical astringencies. And we have a, a rule that's of the ice of the chumbo. You always go for, for the stringency if it's of the ice. Through the mezuzah, the whole world becomes dwelling for Hashem. And we said dira is something that is permanent. In Achshav, in the time of Golus, Arizabella, now it's concealed. It's not noticeable that as an outcome of the mitzvah of mezuzah, the world, the world as a whole becomes dira to Hashem, becomes a dwelling place to Hashem. But it will be noticeable how we accomplished through the midst of mezuzah, we accomplished creating a dwelling place for Hashem, a permanent place for Hashem. They say, they say a joke about the... I don't know if it's a real story or a joke about uh, a guy that uh, noticed that there's, by the rabbi, nobody breaks into his house. It's only breaking in by the... So he asked the rabbi, what's the... What's your trick? There's only breaking in in our places and by you. So the rabbi pointed to the mezuzah. He said, look, I have a mezuzah. It's a religious thing. Hashem is protecting us. So the guy said, okay, I want to have one also. So he, he bought him one. Put it on his door. Three weeks later, he comes back to the rabbi. He said, take it off. I don't want it. He says, why? He says, because all the snows are coming. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So he started having the snows instead of the breaking in. Yeah. So it will be revealed how the mezuzah it brings godliness into the world. I'll tell you a story about the, the Shnur. Is my house, though, I, if they came and I was there, I would give them like $10, $20. My wife, like maybe a dollar. So, so they started coming and say, Where's your husband? No. <laughs> וגם אז אצטרך לעשות עניין השימו על ידי מזוז בישך ובישו איכו. So after the, it says even the time of Mashiach, once the godly mission will be fulfilled in creating the world, still we need to do the mitzvah of מזוזה. Why? צריך להיות עניין השימו, we need to be guarded. Also to remember there's obligation in, in the Gemara. What is Bisharecha means? So it says in the Gemara in Yuma, also Shara Yoris, even the gates of the cities. City gates also need Mezuzah. Gemara speaks of the Shari Boti, the gates of homes, the gates of Chatseros, of courtyards, the gates of states, and Shara is the gates of cities. Although in the time of Mashiach, the Prophet Zechariah prophesied that the Yerushalayim would be without walls. What's the purpose of walls? The whole idea of walls is uh, for protection. Right. If it's time of tranquility, time of peace, in the world, there's no need for walls. Yeah. So pause this. It will be open. What does it mean? We're still going to have a wall. It's uh, speaking about a spiritual wall. In the continuation of the prophecy, 
Zechari, he, he says, Ani ehe lo choymas ish sovim. Hashem will be the, the choyma. Hashem will create a fiery wall around Yerushalayim. So we see from this that even in the time of Mashiach, it will be a time, it will still be shmirah, it will still be guarding. Spiritual guarding. Base. Umam shiru maimu. The Rebbe Marash, Ben Shmuel, continues in, in his Maimah from 1869. To understand the concept of Mezuzah, This is written in the Torah, Pasha Mishpotim. If the after six years of serving, after six years of servitude, okay, yeah. the ever the slave says, "Abti sishti, I love my wife. Yeah, yeah. I love my master. I want to stick around, right?" Vegish right? or and he brings him to the door. Then the Torah says, "Oy la mezuzah," or bring him to the mezuzah. And then he pierces his ear, right? The master right. pierces his ear. And the rabbi said in the Gemara in Kedushin, Why to pierce the ear? Maybe you should pierce something else. Why should you pierce the nose? I heard this, the Ella Sinai, the ear that heard in Mount Sinai, Kilibne Solavodim, my my children are my servants, Pashas Behar, Veolach Vekona Odin Latzman. This guy went and acquired himself a master. Yirotza Delus Yirotza, he should be pierced, his ear. Delus Mzu show you Adim. As the Gemara says, why, why next to the Mezuzah and by the door? Take him to next to the pots and pans in the house. Take him next to the patio. What? What? Why exactly by the door, and the mezuzah? So it says, Omar Kadosh Baruch Hu. Right, the Gemara over there in Kiddushin says, Hashem said, the door and the mezuzah were witnesses in Mitzrayim. They were the witnesses in Mitzrayim, because I have skipped over the doorpost. Right. Yeah. We put the blood on the doorpost. Right. So they were the witnesses that I have acquired the Jewish people. Right. And I said to Amisol, Hashem said to the Jewish people, you are my servants and not servants to servants. Right? If you acquired a master to yourself, that master is also a servant of Hashem. So you become a servant to a servant. I took them from slavery to freedom. And this guy went and acquired a master to himself. His ear should be pierced in front of those, those witnesses. So the reason the Gemara answers why is it being done in front by the door, by the mezuzah, is because they were the witnesses that I freed Amisro. And they are my servants, not the servants, for servants. Um, is there Mukach, it's proven she in Mzuza Shachloizen. Kansa Mzuza is associated with the ear. The Husha Shmir Shabodam in the sense of hearing in men. The inia dua. It's written in Sefer Haredim. The Sefer Haredim was written by Rabbi Lozor Azkiri. She called Mitzvah Misiaches and Muchalin and Porti Shalod. That every mitzvah is associated with particular inyan by men, by your body. Every mitzvah has its, uh, if you know that, you, if there's an issue with a certain limb in the body, you can correct that mitzvah. You could probably uh, take care of it by maybe paying attention more to this, this specific mitzvah.
like the Gemara tells us, for example, that in a Kiddush, if you look at the candles, it repairs your eyes, right? It restores you. It says the Halicha Gosa, if you walk like fast, it can ruin your vision. So the Gemara says how everybody has to sometimes walk fast. How do you, uh, what do you do uh, to protect yourself? So it says you make Kiddush, you look at the candles, it, it, it restores any kind of... Uh, so same thing over here. In Sefer Haredim, he writes that every mitzvah is associated with something specific because we have 630 mitzvahs, 630 in, right? 248 limbs and 365 sinews. Chmei Aveido Chol why, why the Rebbe told her a lot of times to people to check the tefillin mezuzahs? Right? Yeah. So probably the issues that they had were associated with a non-kosher tefillin mezuzah. It says in the parish of last week, parish of Eschanon, Bechol evavcho v'nafshcho v'medecho d'shma, and the Gemara says, what is Bechomei Decho? Bechomei Decho is your money. Because some people love their money more than they love their lives. Yeah. With all your might. With all your might. With all your money. Remember my Jack Benny joke? Jack Benny, they did a skit. He was a comedian, a Jewish comedian. And they did a skit that a mugger comes up to him and he says, your money or your life. And he, he, and Jack well, Benny, let me think about it. Yeah. Kmoi mitzvah's mezuzah. Like the mitzvah of mezuzah. Meaning that you have to acquire mezuzah with your money. There's a mitzvah's tefillin. She needs to call if need to apostle. At the mitzvah tefillin, that was mentioned in the pasuk. Also, you have to acquire tefillin. Can be expensive. But you have to spend money to buy tefillin. No, it's very expensive. Vayesh mitzvah sherechos adam atzma, and there are mitzvahs that are associated with the person himself. When mitzvah savo, like mitzvah vavas Hashem, that's associated with your heart, the nefesh. Forty years later, mitzvah savo mekim b'chalamun shibalev. Love is associated with the right side of the heart. Vainu da'av shavut zichos b'cholav afchon afshchom midecha. Although your love needs to be with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your might. Mikol mokim ikarav b'chalamun shibalev. The primary abode for love is in the right side. In the recesses of your heart, in the right side. And from there it expands to all your heart, to the entire heart. Well, there's a, to, to speak about the Vishnei Tzorecho with both inclinations, so on. This is also associated with Mitzvah Mezuzah. Although Mezuzah in general is associated with your money. The mitzvah mezuzah is particularly associated with your hearing. As we discussed before, the piercing is being done by the mezuzah. Now it will be sweetened. Why does Maimur Savtem is written Pashas Ekeb? Avsha Apostle Uchsavtom, Nemar Gam Pasha Eschan, Apostle Uchsavtom and Mzuzah is also mentioned Pasha Eschan. Although it's also mentioned Pasha Ekeb, but it's also mentioned Pasha Eschan. So why do you mention it? Why the Maimur was written Pasha Ekeb? Okay, that's a good question. Pasuk is part of the right the teaching of, of Mamori Muchsidis by the by rabbis our leaders Kiachiluk Shibim Pasha is Khan Pasha's Ekush Pasha Khanima Ebuna Vere. 
What's the difference between Pasha Eschan and Pasha Seke? Pasha Eschan starts with Moshe Rabbeinu asking to cross the Yardin, to enter the Eretz Yisrael. And Moshe Moshe, because you also live in Yaria, Moshe wanted to impact, to bring about the Yaria. Right? Alter Rebbe explains it in the Maimon and the Kutatero, they wanted to bring your ear, vision, seeing. Yeah. He wanted Amisol to, what does it mean seeing? Seeing godliness. He wanted Jewish people to see godliness. Avshuloi pol amshoch az b'chin l'ariyah, ki b'chin as shmiya b'lvad. Moshe Rabbeinu, request was not answered. Ebon of ere, meaning to bring your ear, being seeing, godliness was not responded. What was responded? Shmia. Kim bechir shmia bilvad. Shmia is a lower level than Iya. Why? Because what you see is is captured much stronger in you than what you hear. Yeah. It's more for example, for a court case. For example, if you see an airplane flying right now, looking through the window, see an airplane flying. And a thousand people will come will tell you that you didn't see an airplane. They can convince you? No. No. You saw, but if I tell you that I saw an airplane, I saw it. A thousand people will convince you that I, uh, that I was mistaken. Because you didn't see it yourself. You heard from me that I saw. Yes. Yeah. So, Riyah is a higher level. Moshe Rabbeinu wanted to... He wanted Jewish people to have re'iya belikus. He wanted to see godliness. But he was able to to give us shmiya. K'mon shukos v'achakach v'atu Yisrael shma el ha'chukim. Atu Yisrael shma. Shma is a shmiya. is is hearing. Nevertheless, Moshe Rabbeinu was able to impact the ear seeing in a state, in a makif type of a way. In an encompassing way. Not in a revealed way. Which, which in general would mean that it's a light that shines from the distance. It's not uh, permeated, not enclosed. Moshe, Moshe saw the air. It's, Moshe saw the land. If Moshe would have crossed the land, he would be able to bring it to everyone. See God in it. It says also, Moshe Rabbeinu was able to impact Seeing godliness by Echidis Gula, by selected few. Some people did marry to see it. al Rebbe writes it in his, in his uh, Mamorim. And also, Shara Tshuva, in the Mamorim of the Tzemach Tzedek, it's written also about Echidis Gula that were capable of seeing, seeing godliness. Asheim Ken Parsha Seikev, so we're still discussing why this Maimah was said about in Parsha Seikev, if you it says Chsatam Zul Bisech also in Parshas Veschan. It says because Parshas Eikev, Nema Vayo Eikev Tishmon. Inyan Hashmir Davko. Parshas Eikev is primarily about Shmir. Chayvan Shatechen Maimah Ze Umale Sinyan Hashmir. Maimah is speaking about primarily about the importance of 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 hearing, the uniqueness of hearing. That's why it's associated with Parsha Zekev, that the theme of Parsha Zekev is that when you are, when you're listening, when you hear something. Rebbe now explains some, a point from the Tzemach Tzedek, from Eir Atel. Shmiya has within it three interpretations. Shem Sholish Bechinas, you have three levels, Machshove Dibu Omaisa, which uh, is broken down to three levels thought, speech, and action. These are the Kalim that we have. 
vessels that we every human being has. Pirush echod loshen avon. What is echod? Loshen avon to understand. So the first explanation is what what is your akir tishma? What is shmiya shma? When you say shma yisrael, when you say the word shma, what does the word shma means? Here. So it says number one explanation is three pirushim what shma means. Okay. So it says the first one is loshon avon, yeah. is not just hear but understand what you hear. Uh, there is listening. And there is hearing. For sure. I hear you means I understand you. If somebody says, I hear you, I hear you. What does he mean he wants to tell you? I, I get the point. I see right. what you're trying to right. say. So it's Loshon Avona. Daber Kishime Avdecho. This is a pasuk in Shmuel. Daber, speak because I'm, I'm listening, because I hear you. Okay. And it's not just regular hearing. It's It's... And taking it in, right? It's like uh, somebody watch a movie or somebody listen to the hurricane news. And listen to the hurricane uh, forecast is very in tune. Yeah, it makes sure that he understands everything. What time? When it starts? When it ends? What the strong? This strong? That? It's not. So, double kishim and how is he how is he maybe and how is he understand it through machshava it's through thought so that's the first level the first level is avona the first level of shema of hearing is has to do with machshava that i'm not just hearing i understand what you're saying Pirush Sheni in the second Pirush of Shema, Loshin Asif. It's the expression of gathering. What does gathering has to do with Shmiya? Kumova Yishma Shau. This is also in, in Shmo. Vaishma Shaul, what does it mean? That Shaul gathered the people. And gathering is associated with Maisa. And according to the third explanation of Shmiya, what is Shmiya? What is hearing? Simple explanation that your ears are hearing the speech. And the Semachzele continues to explain. These three explanations of machshava, dibur, umayse, so thought, speech, and action, and bechina sa machshava gufu. Three levels are the way thought is being expressed in machshava, dibur, umayse. Chiva shabem shecha kosu neymar tishmeun, v'oyo ekev tishmeun, you guard and you should do. What is Shmatem? Shmatem is associated with Dibu, guarded. You should guard it as associated with Dibu. It says on, on uh, a commentary in Rashi in different places, Sifri Rashi. It speaks in Pasha Surah, it, it says, Shmoir Veshomato. It's called Advor Mela Shalek Musaf. Shmoir Zum Mishnah. What is Shmoir? It's Mishnah. Mishnah is Shinun, it's something that you have to repeat time after time. How do you guard it? By repeating it many times so you know it by heart. Rainu Shomo Vepe. Shomer, how do you guard it with your mouth? The Dibu. Asisem, Muyana Maise. And Asisem, obviously, associated with Maise. So Rashi says, "What is why Shomer, why guarded is associated with Mishnah? It's something that you have to guard in your stomach. You should never forget it. Digest it so much that you should never, you, you never, uh, you will, you will never forget it." 
says in Mishle, Ki noim ki tishmer vitcho, bevitnecho. It's noim, it's something good, and therefore you have to guard it in your stomach. Ve'im sheni, ve'im shoniso, and if you repeat it, then repeat it, and again. you'll learn it again and again. Efshash tishmer v'sekayim. Kol sheinu b'chom mishne, enu b'chom maise. So anything that was not repeated is not associated with maise. This is also, this is connected also with the, with the world. If you want to do something, you have to build a habit of doing it. How do you build the habit of doing something through repetition, through Mishnah? What right. is Mishnah? Is you doing it again and again? Right. So it's understood that Tishmun is associated with Machshav. So the three interpretation of machshav v'dibur ma'ase, kefisha machshav v'gufa, they are all associated with machshav itself, with thought itself. Dain machshav is machshav, dibur is machshav, or ma'ase machshav. Everything has to do with machshav. It's like the same way that you have. Uh, we say it, uh, regarding the. In the middle, we say chesed shiv chesed, chesed shiv gvur, right? Each one is a, a, um, intertwined with other with other uh, attributes. So it says you have machshav dibur ma'ase. How in in a way that they are each one is distinguished from the other. Machshav is machshav, dibur is dibur, and ma'ase is ma'ase. And you have machshav that has machshav in it, and dibur that has machshav in it, and ma'ase that has machshav in it. So, so if ma'ase b'machshava tchilo, the end of the act is starts with machshava. So there is a machshava that is completely immersed with thought. There is dibu that has to do with thought, and there is ma'ase that has to do with thought. So all three are are connected with thought. Nevertheless, the third pirush of Shema, of Tishmun, it means simply that your ears are listening to something, you're hearing something. The Pasuk didn't have to tell Tishmun. If there was only speaking of Machshav, 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 you don't have to give, give me a proof that it's Loshan Avon, that it's an expression of un- understanding something. Kim Loshan Avon, Shaz Tzurch Lovi Rashi Loshan Avon, Kim Loshan Avon, Dech Venugea, Lepiru Shekol in a Maise, Shaz Tzurch Lovi Loshan Avon, Loshan Avon, Loshan Avon, Chayba Shanem, Loshan Tishmu, Davka, Ari, Zekai, Bika, Loshmir, Sozik, Pshutu. So the fact that the a Torah is uses the word Tishmun, Vayo Ekev Tishmun, and it comes to tell me that it primarily is associated with hearing, with listening to something, Kipshute. We'll stop here and we'll go to the Zafir and Gimel. We'll stop at Gimel. So I found out, you know, uh...